Hey guys, Brian Cusco here at Triple B, and I'm here with my buddy Ed Villardo from CMC Reptiles. We're gonna do another one of those things where somebody comes into my snake room, asks me questions. We haven't thought about any of this prehand. We don't know what we're talking about. We're today. weighing it. You're watching Triple B TV. <laughs> I'm going to be interviewing myself <laughs> at the coming Pomona show. I'm going to have a section of time between 2 and 4 p.m. on Saturday where I'm going to be inviting people to come up and do what Ed's doing right now. And if you think of one good question, I'm going to be giving everybody one question. You know, we'll, we'll play with time depending on what, how many people turn up that actually want to ask me a question. But you can be on Triple B TV if you want to be and you can ask me one interview question while we're there at the show. And I'm going to make a whole episode of, of people interviewing me at the show that want to know. And I will answer whatever question you ask me, except for one question. And if you watch the vlog channel, you know what that question is. The ball pythons that you do have, I mean, it seems like you like focused on a certain gene even when you just started. Unlike what I did, I just started saying, wow, these are all beautiful snakes and I just started buying a bunch of ball pythons. No, I definitely did that at the beginning. Yeah. I definitely did that at the beginning. I, what, you, what you're talking what you did. Yeah. As well. I, just, I saw what looked pretty and I went oh, for it. Okay, I, I still okay. kind of do that. Yeah, because I, I mean, you don't, I mean, you have, everything you have seems to be really high end and you're like, you're, you know, you get the sunset, the pides, the clowns. Although well, those really... were the things that attracted me. One of the first, one of the most beautiful things, before I knew it, a whole lot about genetics and all the different things that are out there and what's, what's popular versus like, one of the very first animals to really, really catch my eye was a clown pied. Right. Because I saw the picture, I went to go try and find one and started seeing price tags. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. But I went ahead and made the stupid, well, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there there are many stupid. people who would look at it and think, that, what do you, you spend how much on a snake? Yeah. I still Out get of your that. your mind? Like, yeah. yeah. So. I still get that. So what, I mean, what, is your main focus? I mean, is it the sunset, the clown, the pied, or you kind of want to just come? All three of those. All those, those are, those are the three, my three favorite recessive um, mutations. Right. And I really do like working with recessive stuff for a couple of reasons. Well, they, they have some cool results, mm. one. And the other really good reason is that it takes a lot longer to work them into projects. And I, I like that better. I, I feel like it takes more patience. And, and the, yeah. it gets a greater reward, you know, when you have to like raise yeah, up yeah, heads and double true. heads yeah. if you want to make some double recessible. Well, with the clown pied, I just, you know, I purchased her and I paid the price for that. Right. But a lot of the other projects I got going forward, I'm gonna be making my own double heads and triple heads to get these these recessive combinations right. together. And I like the long road. I like to have something to look forward to way down the road. Yeah, that's know? for sure. That's yeah. for sure. And that's just that just helps add another thing to look forward to as as time goes on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Any other genes that morphs that you want to add to the collection you have now i mean like a real favorite one something that you're, I, you're kind of focused on i really like what spot nose does mm -hmm. in a lot of combos that i've seen i don't have anything spot nose yet so that's definitely something i'm planning to add that i right. don't have right now that's about it I've, I've got pretty much most of the genes that i want to work into stuff i have here yeah and it's just a matter of getting them together yeah. so i i will be getting future snakes for the purposes of outcrossing so I'm not keeping yeah. the gene pool too tight, you know, keep that gene pool um, diversified and whatnot. Right, and right. There's some projects I have in my head right now that I'm imagining if I hit it in 10 years or so, yeah. I'll be lucky to, to hit it in 10 years, but I have everything I need yeah, here yeah. as far as the genetics for that. Right, yeah, it definitely takes time. So if you could go back before you got all this, what would you do different? I'd I mean, get a it, female first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I started with five males in the beginning and didn't have any females, but <laughs> like I said, you, you, I mean, did you start with racks? Did you know that much? Or um, I did um, start, well, no, when I first moved back, I, I, got, a, I got a tank. Because that's yeah, what we always kept snakes in when we were kids. We kept right. them in tanks. Like that's what. I, that's why they sell the at the pet stores. Even the reptile pet store, they sell tanks. Yeah. And that's the first thing I got was because yeah. you know, that's what that's again that's what I did when I was a kid. I was like get a tank, and then I, you know, within a couple a couple months actually I had my first trip. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't wait too long like I did. No. Well, let me ask you this: How far? I mean, do you want to go with the ball pythons? I mean, how big? 
would I don't, you like to go? I don't want to be a big. You don't want to be a big breeder. breeder? No. no, I'm saying something like, at my peak, like maybe producing like 30 clutches in a oh, year. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm talking well, about. That's, that's peak. Like when yeah. I'm producing a mass amount for me for what I consider that's to be a lot. That's still. It's a good know, amount of questions. That's a good amount. That's a good amount Definitely. of questions. But that's like again, that's like where I see myself peaking as far as breeding with right. pythons. I've got ideas to like maybe have some kind of place where kids can come and, and check out animals. You know, that's something that's in my mind for the not the immediate future at all, but somewhere down the line. Right. Um, as far as where plans are with snakes in general. But yeah, for breeding, thirty clutches a year, okay. I think, is where I'd like all to right. peak out. Where do you see yourself with the uh the retics. I mean, they're just cool. I'm, I'm always gonna have, I'm always gonna have these retics. I, I don't think I'll breed them that much. Just because not even just like you. I'm doing just this, get one pairing and maybe give yeah, it a shot. Yeah, maybe a pairing. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like I'm doing this uh, thing with Garrett right now. I'm breeding some of Garrett snakes, you know, because then he's gonna be responsible for finding them in the homes and everything. Oh, okay. Um, that's the one thing that's that holds me back from wanting to breed. There's really cool projects that I'd like to try and do, but the clutches you just have the potential for so many snakes, and I just. I mean, even just recently in the past like couple weeks, I've seen so many people like that have recently gotten retics, like getting rid of them. These animals live for so long, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. That's the one main yeah. thing that holds me back. So like, a ball python is easy to keep and care for, you know. If you if you yeah. if you're dedicated, it's not something that's going to get super hit big and overwhelming in life, you know. It's an easy animal. You don't t it doesn't take up a whole giant room full of cages or anything. Right. So right. you know the the concern there isn't as high, you know, as far as where the animal's going to end up down yeah. the line, you know. Yeah. So, but I would, I would like to do my own pairing of reticulated pythons. I've just been, and I could, I have animals that are ready to breed right now. Right. But I've just been holding off on it because I'm not confident in having all the babies go to, because I'm not yeah, going to keep, I'm not going yeah, to keep we're, we're not 80 snakes. talking ball pythons. These yeah. are big animals. So that's, that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. So who do you think is smarter, you or Garrett? Oh, definitely Garrett. <laughs> definitely Garrett. I mean... <laughs> it depends. I, I've told him that. I told him that when I first met him. I told him. I told him. I said, "There's not many people that I meet that intimidate me because I think they're more intelligent than me." <laughs> That's what I told him. And I, and I'd, st I'd still tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some things that he's not as intelligent. I, I've, I, as, as I've learned, <laughs> learning to meet, to know Garrett a little better, I realized that there are a couple things that I know better. <laughs> Well, I like, I, like the, I like to think that at least. I'm, I'm going to pull out a snake before you start getting me in big trouble. All right. Not that I couldn't take care of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's we, another we, topic. We love you, Kit. <laughs> um, so here we got the one of the sunsets. Yeah, this is the cinnamon sunset that I've that I've held back and well, I well that, to be honest, she's still available on Morph Market. Right. But it, it's basically I'm not selling price, you know, but somebody. Yeah, it's something that's yeah, someone that really knows uh, the market and definitely has the money to invest. Tweet. Well, somebody who really knows the market knows that my price might be a little high at this. Yeah, point. exactly. Yeah, so it would be if somebody did purchase it at that price, you're talking about somebody who's just. Uh, after you know more of a collector rather than an right. investor yeah but man has a lot of money yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure yeah but she uh i was very impressed i'm still impressed with her when, when she yeah, first came I mean, out like the the pattern uh, i like that she has all this the alien heads are trying to band across almost like ghi kind of thing going yeah, on yeah right you can there. see that busy pattern for sure yeah there were definitely. nights that i just sit here with this girl for like an hour and just sit there and pour over her every little detail because it's so impressive. She's got these little stripes that her eye stripes are faded. They come through and they there's a little light blue streak that goes through the eye, right through the eye stripe. Wow. And uh, there's all these little tiny details. And of course, with any ball python, they start, the colors fade as a little bit. Yeah, as they, but that one's pulling its color pretty nice. Yeah, the, the color up to the belly. I mean, it's a year old now? Um, yeah, she's going to be a year, she's going to, she hatched it on September 1st last year. Oh, okay. So. Almost. It's like a plum color. This is the color right. she has always had is this plum. That is amazing. You know, when she first came out, I mean, she looked so much, especially down here towards the back end, she right. looked so much different than most of the, uh, sunset, well, there's only a handful of cinnamon sunsets yeah. out there at the point, but the ones I had seen just had such a different look. I, I was questioning that it was actually the Enchi yeah. cinnamon sunset, but then after you're just looking at Enchi cinnamons, it just, I realized that it's just wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's what's so fun about 
this hobby, you just you just don't know. I mean, every time you cut a clutch, or you just don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, that that's I a mean, that's, big huge thing where you don't know what yeah. a combo that has never been done before. You don't know what's gonna come. And there's out. no two the same. Yeah, I mean, exactly the same. True. It's just the pattern's different. Always, and there's such there's such sweet snakes. Yeah, I mean they're so <laughs> they are. They're so very cute. rarely do you find a a snappy ball python, unless they're hatchlings. But yeah, when they start maturing, they're not bad at all. Although I like the snappy ones, it means they usually eat pretty well. Yeah, they're good eaters, <laughs> <laughs> and it's cute to me. A snappy ball python is like it's still cute. Yeah. To me. <laughs> yep, yep, it's almost funny. So what do we got here, Brian? This is Mr. Pink. He's an Enchi Lesser. He's Pos Het Sunset. Oh wow! Actually, and he was the very first ball python that we produced here at Triple B. Wow! And he also, I know, as you watched, you've seen, he's yes. Eli's favorite snake. Yeah, <laughs> which just makes him even that much more special. Yeah, than me, for sure. you know? yeah, definitely. And he, he got his name because he was the only one in the clutch that made it. We had an incubation issue oh, wow. at, at, with this clutch. But some people have said that there might have been some other issue. You know, it could have been more than just that because they said this the incubator being open through the night. It's not like it was uh, winter, yeah, winter time, exactly. but, yeah, that's true. But the the whatever whatever it was, <clears throat> um, he was the only one that made it, which is how he got the name Mr. Pink. If you've seen <laughs> wow. Reservoir yeah. Dogs, <laughs> wow, it's happened to me. I mean, my first entire clutch didn't make it. They all hatched out of the egg. They all came out and they were all dead, and just all out of the egg, perfect. You know, all formed. They were super Mojaves. I don't know if it's the incubator. Or what it was, but I think you know everybody that is into breeding has you know I've had some issues this year with a couple of kinking issues, you know you never know if it's temperature, humidity, or what the or if it's just genetics. This is a mother and daughter situation here. This is Lucy and her daughter Cindy. Oh, wow, so she's so about she's, she's she ready. She is in shed guy. She's yeah. about to see. There it is, right there. Yeah. So she's gonna, she's about to look way, way nicer than this. She's like about to become a brand new snake. In fact, if you want to go over to the vlog channel, I'll make sure to make a point of getting her on camera so you can see what she looks like from this versus the shed. And the link for the vlog channel is always in the description. And so Lucy's a fire clown, which is why she got the name Lucy. Yeah. If you know about, and she's named after Lucille Ball, basically. <laughs> wow. Redheaded, red right. funny lady. You know? I know who that is. <laughs> fire clown. And, uh, and Cindy, uh, she had a little, this one single dot on one side, like Cindy Crawford oh, when wow. she was born. So that's, that's why I named her Cindy. But I she, see it right so, there. So yeah, so we got fire, fire clown and a firefly and she clown. Man, this is a big clown too, big female. And this is a girl. I was almost considering selling this girl to Brian Gundy. He said he was interested in her, and I decided that I really didn't want to let her go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, hard. it's actually hard to sell your animals sometimes. <laughs> I know, I'd run into that problem all the time. But she's a she's a big girl. After she man, laid the first is. clutch, she just skyrocketed, man. Some snakes just grow, man. So yeah, she's that's for sure. One of them. <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about, you know, I know people power feed their animals, especially during breeding season, but like you said, sometimes if you offer them food too much, well, I mean, they could stress them out and put them off food. Yeah, sure. I mean, the thing is with with pythons, it, as you may know, is they uh, the, all their organs enlarge in size when they're right. digesting meals. You know, their heart like doubles in size. I think their liver like quadruples in size or something. So it's a fairly stressful thing on their system right. to digest food, and it takes a while. You know, if you're feeding them once they get older, if you're feeding them more than more often than a couple weeks, I think then it's it's uh, it could be detrimental to their system. Yeah. I, I've heard of um. I believe uh, Vin Russo, what, what I understand, he feeds his snakes um, between September and January, as much as they'll eat, mm -hmm. and then not at all the rest of the year. Wow. And I think that works really well for him, I, which makes sense. Like I think that the African season, there's only a certain season when animals are actually get, able to get food when there's actually yeah. rain, and it's not the drought part of the season, but that's, that's what I understand. I, well, the one thing I do know for sure is that digesting food for any living entity is a process and takes a to small toll on the body. <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I've proven to myself time and time again with massive, massive, massive pints of ice cream in the evening. <laughs> wake up feeling like it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's very, that's very true. That's very true. Leo Halo. Woohoo! Uh, 
Yeah, so the other week when Brandon was here, Halo was having some skin issues. So, but she shed out and her skin is like perfect now. So, I figured we can pull her out and yeah. have a good time with her. As long as she doesn't poop on me. <laughs> <laughs> so you you know this snake well. I mean, yeah. Well, we brought it. This was the one we brought yesterday. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We brought her. We brought Halo to an educational show yesterday, yeah. which I was really happy about that she was ready to go because she's such a, she's like the best snake for shows she just like is so gentle and she's so good with the kids yeah she was for sure and oh, she heavy. i just i can <laughs> i can trust her it's I, amazing i can trust her to not freak out and she's just so used to being handled i mean all all the snakes that i've raised here from babies are are good are good snakes and they're, they're easy to handle but she just has this particular docileness about her just yeah, like this real sure. real gentle nature just slow moving curious never never flinches never tries to buck you anything like that just a real easy easy going snake oh yeah and the heavy <laughs> there you go. muscle yeah she's good did you get this this since that you've had a halo since uh hatchling yeah yeah she fit in the and I held her in the palms of my hands like this wow. when I first got her. So how old is Halo? Um, she is, a, she just turned four years old. So is this the animal you pretty much would take to all the shows? Yeah, if she was always, you know, if she, unless she's in shed or, you know, stuff like that, then I'll, I'll let, or if she's had a big meal, I wouldn't bring, but she is definitely my go-to ambassador. Right. I've been bringing Betsy Ross because she's a little bigger. Betsy has surpassed Halo in size. So it's a tad more impressive for the kids, I yeah. think. But. It's, she's not that much bigger, so it's... Yeah, because this is probably one animal I would love. I mean, what do you recommend for someone that wants to get a animal this size? I mean... Just be ready. Just, yeah. just know what you're getting yourself into. It's not a... It's a big snake. Yeah, that's for it's sure. a lot of animal. And they take big poops and often... <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and destroy their cages. Sometimes I'll spend 45 minutes cleaning one cage. You know what Man, I mean? that's just... That's time. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time. It's a it takes, big mess. And it's... I mean, we're, we're fairly strong guys right here. We can, you know, we can, yeah. we can lift this girl, and but she's not even anywhere near right full now, grown full yet. Right now, full grown, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Vanessa, Ed's daughter's back there right now getting all the nice shots of the snakes, so if you get some good shots, you can thank Vanessa. If they're not so good, well, you know who you can blame. <laughs> 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 all right, guys, thanks for watching. Next week... I think we're going to try and pop in on my buddy Travis. He's had some bull snakes and carpet pythons hatching out, and we'll go check him out. And then the week after that, we're going to start rolling into the Pomona interviews. And I've already got some really good interviews lined up. Some of the old school legendary keepers out there are, I, I'm going to have a couple of those guys on my channel, I believe. That's, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm a tiny bit nervous about it. But I'm going to prepare myself, read up as much as I need to, and hopefully it'll, it'll all go off well without a hitch. I look forward to you guys seeing you guys there. Look forward to you guys seeing you guys there. Yeah, we'll just leave that. Uh, Ed, thank you for all hey, the pleasure you for having me. along, man. Appreciate it. Good times, good times, and we'll see you next week. Y'all take care. We we did talk about some questions that maybe we probably shouldn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> The question is, what does triple B mean? Is that the question? <laughs> that's, the, that's the unanswerable question. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Let's forget the measure. You're watching Triple B TV. One more time. This is Triple B. No, you're watching. You're watching. Huh? <laughs> All right. We're in sync. We're ready to do this. You want to say it? <laughs> the thing, yeah, the thing. God, we're good. We're good. We're done. Let's go. I'm gonna turn off.